Hello, in this uh, video we're going to talk about logo design. Um, that's going to come in handy for uh, the last project. Um, and just any design, any, you know, any type of branding, if you're working with branding or any type of identity, um, it's good to know this information. So, um, the word logos is a Greek origin, um, and it's all about how things are given form and meaning, or how things are understood. So that's kind of what is the meaning behind the word logos. Um, and, you know, in general, when we see a logo, um, you know, and I'm asking you to think about this more analytically from a designer's, kind of put yourself in a, the designer's shoes. Um, we want to, you know, when we look at logos, we notice that they're very simple. Um, in general, you have to keep logo design very simple. Um, because the reason for that is it's going to be, you know, on multiple objects usually, and it's going to be in multiple places, and it's going to be in multiple various sizes. So it's good to always test it at its smallest size to make sure that it works. Uh, well visually and the smallest size you'll ever see a, and a, um, a logo is going to be a, a 16 six by 16 uh, pixel favicon which is when you go into a search bar online on the internet and you see the logo in the edge or the left side of the search that's the smallest a logo will probably ever be in um, but before, you know, companies create an identity system, um, they ask themselves questions. You know, you've got to think about who are you? You've got who needs to know who you are, how will they find out, and why should they even care? So designing an identity is much more than just designing a logo. Um, and an identity system, it's, it's basically a visible and tangible statement that's memorable it's manageable and it's consistent. Um, and the reason you want it memorable is it needs to stand out in crowded marketplaces. So as you look at these two pages, you probably recognize quite a few logos and logo type uh, word marks um, that, you um, that exist out there. Some of them are a little old and have been changed and modified over time. But when we look at the question, who are you, you know, what is your company's personality? Um, if it were a car, what type of car would it be? I can kind of give you an analogy. And, you know, who needs to know, you know, if a customer were purchasing this car, you know, what kind of person would be driving? Here's a few of the Nike um, products that have the logo on it. So we go from being printed on a soccer ball to clothes to shoes to watches to visors to uh, weights, you know, all kinds of items here that this logo. And if you didn't know this, the, the Nike, original Nike logo was designed in the early 70s. Um, or mid 70s and it was designed by a woman she worked for the company um, and some of the ideas that they had come up with were not really working very well she came they hired her uh, to come up with a design of course when she presented the design it was a total you know they weren't really happy with it they didn't think that it was going to work um, and so, but they went with it, and luckily their products or shoes at the time really sold themselves. Um, over time, it has become one of the most iconic um, symbols noticeable by most Americans today. Um, and she was paid originally $35 to do the logo. Uh, later on, after they made millions and millions of dollars from it, <laughs> They offered her an undisclosed amount of stock in the company and gave her some jewelry, some very beautiful jewelry with the um, logo, um, diamond encrusted logo.
So I'll let you watch this video through the slides, but this is uh, Swisscom. It's a Switzerland's leading telecoms provider. They have 5.5 million mobile customers and about 1.8 million broadband connections. Um, but they underwent several years ago a complete corporate rebrand. Um, and so we, that included their logos, their uniforms, their signage, their PR info, brochures, ads, you know, everything um, completely like was modified. And so they had to think about um, all of this. And bigger corporations and larger companies will have a corporate identity manual. Um, that's going to be a whole entire booklet that gives the exact specifications of how their um, logo, wordmark, brand image is presented on all the different types of media and products um, that exist, even down to business cards, letterheads, down to trucks, vehicles, billboards, doors, sign, any type of signage. Um, so that's really what a, a identity manual is. Um, the University of Mississippi even has one uh, related to all of the Ole Miss um, uh, verbiage, all the trademarked everything, all those uh, CMYK trademarked colors, uh, used by the university. They even have the word Mississippi trademarked. Um, so if anyone outside the university uses the word Mississippi in context with the university, um, then they are infringing on copyright or trademark. Um, companies also have their colors, just like I was talking about Ole Miss's colors. We have, um, we have our red, our blue, we have actually two navies. One's a little darker than the other. We have the baby blue and the pink. Um, and so all of those are trademarked specific colors that we use through the university. So anything that you see with the university that's printed are using those trademarked colors. So uh, you always want to watch out for that to keep from being sued if you're using colors. You don't want to use another trademarked color of another company. But all logos start in black and white. If they don't work in black and white, they're not going to work in color. Um, so all logos are tested usually in black and white before they're tested in any color scheme whatsoever. Um, so that's really important to remember. But once you've decided on those colors, those go into trademark. Those heads have specific variations of um, you know, different pigments, and they are, depending on CMYK color or RGB color, um, you've got trademark codes for all the colors, and then those colors are used in everything they do. Um, so as you can see here, um, you're looking, you know, at the website, um, and so that um, is going to reflect the color scheme of their branded colors. Here we have New York written in six ways, or not written in six ways. We have the same typeface, but we've got different color schemes. So from top to bottom, we've got the New York Yankees, then we've got the Giants, and then we've got the Rangers, Mets, Knicks, uh, the Jets. So we've got all their different color schemes. And oftentimes in a crowded marketplace, you're gonna see you know, certain logos that are similar. Um, but if you notice them, they're still unique to their own brand. Um, so that's what you have to make sure that you do anytime you're doing something similar to someone else in terms of a company or a branded look and identity. Here they've pretty much got the same uh, concept here, but they have variations of how they are um, making that same type of graphic a little bit more unique for their own company and how reflective it is of their own unique identity. The one thing to watch out for is gimmicky logos and identity systems. Um, you don't want to overdo it on the special effects or the gradients of color, those have to work and be legible and readable. 
um, typeface choices, all of that is very important. Um, and it has to fit the nuance and the voice of, of your company as well. So gimmick free, that also leads to, when you have something gimmicky, it leads to a lack of trust in your company. Um, you know, if, if you're into fashion and you're into very high-end fashion and you go and you can spot a knockoff brand um, right away, that's usually because there's something in the design that is, um, you know, not quite right. Um, so if we saw this Target logo on something else, um, and a product or something, and it were presented in this way, we would probably wonder if it were actually the, the real Target brand or not. So, and this is the Apple logo over time, how simple it's gotten. The first logo is from 1976, which as you can see is not very simple at all. Um, but over time, it has gotten a little bit more simple. It's, you know, through, um, there was a short period of time where things were still kind of looking 3D, and now we've kind of, in recent years, gone back to more of a flat uh, look there. But keep things simple. Simple is best, innovative, and simple. You want more of a novelty type or a novel type um, way of executing a design or concept. Um, you know, if we look at this one on the right, that printed really, really small into a favicon, you would not probably be able to really see what's going on in this picture. Like I mentioned earlier, all logos work in black and white before they work in color. Um, and you want consistency. Every time that logo is on a different product or wall or sign or wherever it is, it needs to stay consistent. Because um, the reason for that is it appeals to our senses. It's a visual and verbal expression of a brand that can be seen, it can be touched, heard, held. Um, so, um, you know, when you have consistency and that identity, a strong identity, um, you know, that's basically reassuring the public that who you are is who you say you are, and that connects the organization to the images and ideas that are behind it. Um, so we've got to think about sight as a powerful tool. You know, if we look at the Nike and the Target logo at the bottom, those are skewed or distorted. Um, that's not consistent with their, with everything they have um, printed on everything. So the through that repeated exposure, a symbol becomes really recognizable um, to some companies. And, um, and when it becomes so recognizable, like in this case, Target and Nike, um, a lot of those companies have made the decision to drop the textual portion of their identity completely out. Like, you don't need to see the word Nike beside the swoosh. You know who it is. Same with Target. 